All right. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Assalamualaikum, everyone. My name is Manal. Thank you for joining us on a Saturday. I know everyone's busy here, so we really appreciate your time and your presence. We'll get started with our presentation on step one and complex level one. And so we have a bunch of MS3s, myself being an MS4, um, in the group right now, and we'll, we're happy to share from our knowledge. So please keep yourselves muted and feel free to type questions in chat. We will have opportunity towards the end to ask our panelists any questions and have them answered. So in terms of oops, AMWPA, so this is just who we are. I'm sure you've seen us around. Uh, we do a lot of community health fairs. There are chapters at many of the medical student schools now. So you should definitely be involved with your local chapter. Um, and we also have the mentorship program, and uh, we have a great WhatsApp group that is pretty active, I would say. And so if you are not part of that WhatsApp group, you should definitely message me, and I can add you to that as well. Um, but here you can definitely see the different kinds of work that we do. And as with every program, we start in the name of Allah. So I'm reading um, Surah Alak, um, just the first five verses. So this in the Rahman Rahim, Ekra, the Snare of the Kelly Holak, Holak and Insanam in Alak, Ekra, where a book at Akram, a Lizzy Alima will follow, Alim and Insanam Alam Yadam. So it's the English translation of that being read in the name of your Lord who created, created humans from a clinging clot, read in your Lord is the most generous, who taught by the pen, taught humanity what they knew not. And so as we know, these are the first verses that were revealed to our beloved prophet. And for me, these verses signify the importance of the pursuit of education, of literacy, um, as part of our worship, as part of our relationship with the deen and with Allah, most and foremost, first and, first and foremost. Um, and so all of us pursuing higher education, being in the field of medicine, I'm sure we can relate to that. And so I really pray that all of y'all's journeys become easier and are filled with all the barakah, inshallah. And then just to meet your moderator. So my name is Manal. I'm a fourth year medical student. I'm at UT Southwestern. I just finished my last residency interview yesterday. So alhamdulillah, I am enjoying fourth year life. So I've been part of the AMWPA program since I moved to Dallas in 2019 now. Um, and I was actually one of the founders of the mentorship program. So super excited to be a part of this panel and just excited to meet all of y'all and just engage with the community at large. So if y'all have any questions about fourth year, about residency applications, ERAF, all that good stuff, do reach out. I'll share my number in the chat at some point as well. And then now moving on to our panelists, I am super grateful for these lovely folks for spending time with us this Saturday. I know all of them are on clerkships right now, and that is super impressive. That means they're super busy and they still made time in their day to be here and be present and help you with their step one advice. So with that, I will turn the speaker to Stephanie and she will introduce herself. Hey guys, my name is Stephanie Albana. I am a current third year at TCOM in Fort Worth. I'm also a Fort Worth native. I went to UT Arlington, so I've always been around and I'll probably always be around. So if you need something, if you need a hot cup of tea or a shoulder to cry on, always here. Hey, Assalamualaikum. My name is Anusha. I am a third year currently at Texas A&M. I don't know why it says UT Southwestern. I'm at Texas A&M, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm always here. Um, in case you ever need anything, I'll also drop my phone number in the chat. Hi, Kong. My name is Tamil Rashi. I'm a third year at TCOM, Dallas native, went to Fort Worth for medical school, and right now I'm in Corpus for my pediatric rotation. But if you guys need any help with anything, especially Anki, I'm here to help. I'm like, oh, my name is Kulsum. I am also third year at TCOM. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I took a few gap years after college, so if you have any questions about that, um, I also did the med sci program at UNTHSE, so I can also help you um, answer questions about that.
All right, so first up is just a little bit about what's on the exam. So I'm sure that you guys have seen this before. This is specific to step one, but it is also relevant for what's on Comlex because those overlap so much. So this is kind of looking at like how things like shape out. So like when it says like 12 to 16 percent range, so that's talking about like the distribution in the exam. Now take this with a grain of salt because like you look at this and you're like, oh, OK, so that means that this is most important. Not necessarily, because the amount of data for each section is different. So what you want to focus on for your exam is what we call low-hanging fruit. That's why there's two little arrows at the bottom. If you see like biostats, epidemiology, and the social sciences, those are tested and they are easy questions, or at least stuff that you can figure out easily, a few concepts that you already have in the back of your mind, and uh, easy points to get on the exam. Because at the end of the day, the exam is a numbers game. So you want to try to do what you can. Similar to MCAT, but trust me, not nearly as bad as MCAT. And this is uh, some more into that. So this should be things that you've seen before. And don't be scared by the competencies thing. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how you kind of shape the way that you study based on the percentages that you get in your practice questions. So we'll go more into that later. And again, so as you can see, like pathology, very, very high yield. I, for those that go to TCOM or other schools that kind of do the physiology first year and then pathophysiology second year, it's like, oh, okay, so the stuff that I'm learning right now is so super duper important. important. That's true. So that's why it's important while you're going along through your blocks that you're kind of keeping board specific things in mind because not everything that you need for boards will be taught in the classroom. That's true. And then also some of the stuff that's really important in boards may not be hammered as much in the classroom. That's why it's important to be vigilant now. So start your board prep if you haven't already now. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to talk about resources that you can use to prep for your exams. So UWorld is the main thing that most of us use. Um, it's basically like a huge question bank with um, over a thousand questions, I believe, divided by subjects. So you have like all systems, you have some questions on um, ethics, biostats, everything. So that's going to be the bulk of your studying. Um, try to get through at least 75 to 80 percent of UWorld. Um, I personally did 100 percent of UWorld and that helped me. But I know people passed with lower, per, um, lower amount finished. So it's and the more you do it, the easier it will get to get through it. It's going to be really hard to get through all of it at first. Um, the explanations are really long. They can get a little bit tedious, but you'll learn a lot through UWorld. They have really nice um, images and tables that go along with it. Um, and then also important point about UWorld is that don't get stuck on the percentage you get right. It's basically like a learning tool. Um, your content is going to be based on UWorld. Um, and then True Learn is kind of like the equivalent that DO students use to prepare us for Comlex. Um, so... Most of us use UWorld and TrueLearn, um, but I feel like UWorld questions are a little bit harder, so they will train you for Comlex as well. But if you just do TrueLearn, um, that won't really prepare you for steps. So UWorld is the main thing that you do. Um, the first aid book is more of a reference document. Um, I um, downloaded it to my iPad, so I could just like control F and um, just annotate it. And that was easier than going through the entire book by myself. And then the sketchy farm and micro um, videos, I'm sure you're familiar with that. That's just a great tool if you're a visual learner. Um, and then Pathoma is a great resource for pathology. Um, so they have videos and a book that go along with it. So I personally use Pathoma throughout my second year. And then um, during dedicated, I would just review it. But a lot of my friends watch the videos again, too. So just another resource. Um, and then moving on to the next slide. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's just some other resources, Words and Beyond, another good review resource, but the videos are longer. Um, so um, I would also just suggest not starting anything new during dedicated, like all of these resources, um, because they tend to take more time um, during dedicated. You want to focus mainly on like practice questions, UWorld, and the NBME exams. But this is just 
if you're stuck on a concept, I would recommend going to a Boards and Beyond video. Um, Dirty Medicine is a great free resource with quick, fa quick facts and mnemonics. Um, he also has um, great videos on OMM topics that I used right before my exam, and that got me some points as well. Um, Randy Neal, also a free YouTube channel. He has really good biostats review, which I used as well. And whenever you do biostats, make sure that you practice questions as well. Um, Amboss, that's another paid resource. Um, a lot of questions, a lot of great content. And then Golden Review, I personally use some of it when I was driving or exercising. Um, again, he'll tell you some pearls that you might see on your exam. Um, Divine Intervention Podcast, I didn't really use it, but just another resource. And Pixarize videos are really useful for immunology in biochem. It's kind of like sketchy where they give you visual references to help you stick um, the hard concepts about biochemistry and immunology. Um, and then in my comment section of this slide, I have um, some, if you're taking the COMLEX exam, I have some videos on OMM topics like visceral and Chapman points that can help you gain some um, points on the exam. And then my last slide is the practice exam. So like I was saying before, UWorld is to test is for content review. Practice exam is where you're going to see where you stand. So NBME and BOME practice exams, um, you can buy them off of the website. I think, I can't remember how much they were, but if you buy three of them, you can get a nice deal. Um, these are essential for learning the timing of the exam and the style of the questions. Um, and they're like a full length practice exam. And the good thing about the NBME exam is that they will give you a percentage likely that you are to pass the test within the next week. So how most people use it is during the their dedicated period of time about maybe if they're like two weeks out, they'll take a test and it will give you a um, percentage likely. So for example, it might say oh, you are 97% likely to pass this test. And that will give you a reassurance that you are ready to take the test in the next few weeks. Um, the old and new free 120. So that's a free 120 question test. Um, I have the links for it in the comment section. And the good thing about this is that you might see some repeat questions on your actual test. So I would suggest doing these a few days out from your test. Um, UWorld self-assessments, these will come with your UWorld package that your school probably buys for you. Um, I personally did not take these because I've heard that they are harder than the actual test. And I honestly didn't have time. But if you have time, I would suggest taking these. Um, AMBOSS self-assessment is a 160 question free self-assessment. It starts in February of every year. So next month, I would suggest registering for it. Um, this will again give you a three digit score. Um, so it can tell you how prepared you are. And then lastly, the FBS, CBSC, COMSA exams, they're school dependent. So for example, TCOM, um, made us take one of each. So that is just for us to know where we stand. So we took one in December, we took one in March, and then we took one in May. Um, these are paid for by school. So if your school does that, I would recommend taking these seriously. Another tool to see where you're at. And then we're going to move on to the next slide. So Whenever you study, it just depends when you want to study. If you're going to start studying now, just line up your resources with your school lectures. So people, a lot of people use first aid. I personally didn't. I stuck with Board and Beyond, Pathoma, and Sketchy. Um, but first aid is your thing. Just keep up with the first aid. Uh, make sure you can watch Pathoma videos. I'm an outlier, so don't like take what I say uh, about how I studied as like the go-to, because um, I didn't watch any videos. I just did straight Anki, and that's all I did for studying, and that's all that worked for me. I didn't do anything else other than Anki. So, but these worked a lot of people. Just find out what you want, so that way you can uh, better attune the way you study and get where you want to be for step one or complex one. Uh, if you're going to start well before, just make sure you're keeping up with it, which is what Anki is very great for. Um, it helps you just the space repetition helps you make sure you're really on track. 
uh, it's okay if you get it wrong and you can just continue just doing it. Uh, just don't overload yourself longer because it does get a lot sooner or later, especially if you're like doing very heavy amount of new cards every single day. Uh, if you're going to start after winter break, you're going to have less time. And you, depending on when you get your U world from the school, usually I would do about like 10 to 20 questions a day uh, before dedicated, sometimes 45 extra time. Any of the incorrect ones, I would make a flashcard for it. If I get a question right, but it was like a guess, I would flag it so I can go back to it again later on. Uh, just make sure you, in your world you can see like what topics you are missing more often so you can go back and review that as well. And if you're going to start studying during dedicated, you're going to have to make sure you have everything planned out and kind of know how you want to study because you're going to have, uh, depending on the school, we had six weeks, other schools get like eight weeks, but you have to make sure you know what you're going to study, what your weaknesses are. And you have to go through a lot of questions as quickly as possible with also making sure you have time to go back and reviewing the questions you got right and wrong. Uh, and then also be sure you have time for yourself as well. Don't care so much about the exam. You're forgetting about yourself. Just make sure you have like more of a balanced type thing. Next slide. Uh, so when creating a schedule, there's a lot of schedules you can find online, like on Reddit or anything else. I think we have some schedules here that we can uh, show you guys as well. Um, I was a morning person. I've always been a morning person. If you're not a morning person, don't force yourself to be a morning person. Just try to, you can slowly go up to becoming a morning person, but don't force it right away on the first day. Uh, you are gonna have to try to get used to being a morning person eventually for the exam, because they do start at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, depending where you are. Um, so make sure you are doing that and then make sure you also choose a question make you want to use a lot. A lot of people use UWorld and eventually during dedicated I would be doing a lot of questions. I didn't really take many practice exams. I took, I did just UWorld. I would be doing like 160 to 200 questions a day um, but that was me and you can slowly work up to that and then you can go from there. And that's about it. So this is a little bit about how each of us made our specific schedules. So I'll be the first to say that for my schedule, mine changed depending on my scores and kind of what I was noticing. So one thing that I thought was really helpful to get me to jump, like I would say like jump 10 groups, like whenever you're getting like 50%, 60%, 70% correct on UWorld, like you kind of look for those, those thresholds. And what helped me jump 10 groups was really focusing on like the distribution on UWorld, like which sections I'm getting wrong the most. And I would like actually go and I was like, you know what? I don't wanna get a single cardio question wrong from this point forward. And I would just go into, I would watch a few videos like from some of the high yield videos that I'm gonna show you guys later. And then I would go straight to first aid and I would make note sheets and then I would do the reteach method. So I just want to show you guys, like, it really depends on, like, what kind of learner you are. Like, if you are completely online, like, can do, like, Anki and can do uh, UWorld, and that works for you. But if, like, in my case, I'm kind of visual kinesthetic learner, so, like, I learn from my hand. So I would actually, like, go through and make note documents. Whatever works for you. And then I also have, like, a giant whiteboard. I rewrite things over and over again and try to re-explain them. So um, like my schedule changed depending on what was working. And if I needed to, like, I would still try to get my questions done for the day, like my, however many blocks I'd given myself to get done for that day. But if I need to take a step back and just hammer in content and sacrifice some questions that day, I would. So like my schedule changed. And that's like what I'm going to say is like whatever schedule fits your lifestyle, don't be afraid to make modifications here and there if you're not getting the results that you need. Next, who else wants to talk about their schedule? I can talk <clears throat> about my schedule a little bit. So um, I am not really good at following a schedule. So I kind of, um, I knew what I was weak on. For example, I was not really good at, at cardio and pulmonology, pulmonology questions. So I gave myself about three days 
to do um, a whole bunch of UWorld cardiology questions. And then I, I, again, like Stephanie would go back to first aid and I would just write out what I was missing from those questions. And I also had um, a one note document where I would put like a one liner on what I missed and what I needed to gain from the question. So that's how I did it. Um, I did about 70 to 80 U world questions a day. That was the bulk of my studying. Um, and then I did about one practice test a week leading up to my exam. So I did about three NBME exams and that's how I did it. So as I said, I always used Anki and never deviated from that. Uh, by the time dedicated came around, I had maybe about 500 review cards a day. So I would start off by doing my review cards, getting those out of the way and then jumping straight into questions. I do 40 blocks, at, 40 questions at a time uh, with that, I would go and review them. If I was going to do, in the beginning, I would do, yeah, I went straight to like 160 questions because I was already used to like timing out a lot of Anki cards and just being in one setting and continue studying. As far as practice exams, I only took the extra USML, the U World uh, practice exam, only one of them. I didn't take any two. I didn't really do many practice exams. I just focused mostly on U World and just did like basically a practice exam every day, 160 to 200 questions a day along with reviewing. Uh, and then a few days before I would cut down on the questions or start watching videos as like a more of a content review and just kind of relax myself before the actual exam came up. I'll kind of go into my schedule a little bit when I get to my slides, cause I feel like it's a little bit more detailed and it'll, it'll be easier to visualize. <laughs> This is an example of my schedule. So I'm a couple years out of, from taking step one. Um, this is like the ideal schedule that I had. So you can see that I was doing like a practice exam over the weekends and I was making sure to have like at least like a good day off, especially earlier on in my dedicated. And then towards the end of my dedicated it was either like a day to half a day that I made sure was off. Um, changes that I made, I emphasized you world in the morning. So I was doing less content review by like week three for sure. Um, and I made sure like the first thing I did when I woke up, prayed fudger, had a good breakfast, and then I just sit down and do like a problem set of you world. So that was like 40 questions straight. Um, and that was really effective for me because I felt like that, that made a good morning for me. And then I just felt like I was super accomplished. Um, in terms of passive learning, I, I did not do any Anki or first aid, honestly. I really just focused on Pesto and my sketchy and then the weeks leading up to the exam. I did some dirty medicine and I think takes a ride. Um, and my goals, what I prioritize is getting through as much UL as possible. I will also say, so my school, we get four weeks of dedicated study time. I, um, towards the like third week three of like my practice exams, I was not passing confidently. Um, and so I talked to my school and I extended uh, my dedicated period. So I ended up taking five weeks total to study for step one. Um, and something we'll talk about later is just like managing your mental health during this time. But um, one thing I want to emphasize to all of you all in the group chat right now is just that if you don't feel like you are passing confidently, whether it's step one or complex level one, this is your career on the line. Like no one's going to tell you what to do except for yourself. No one's going to prioritize you as much as yourself. And it's very much like a mental game, like how much confidence you walk in day of determines how well you will perform. Um, and so for me, between week three and week five, it's not like I studied so much more effectively or anything. It was just that I was able to take more practice exams and pass those super confidently. So I knew walking in for my exam that I knew that I could do it and I felt confident and I had the proof that I passed like several times at that point. Um, so yeah, that's my biggest advice. If you don't feel confident, don't take the exam. Like don't, no matter what, timeline the school tells you there is, prioritize your career and make sure there's no doubt, inshallah, that you're gonna fail the exam. Um, I think these are some past example schedules too. I'll just skim through these. This was another um, MS4. You will ha you'll have the PowerPoint after, so you can look through what she did, what I did. And then I think Yasin's schedule is here too. Um, he definitely started UWorld before dedicated 
both Mev and I walked into Dedicated, not having started any of it. But yeah, you guys can look at that on your own time. Again, for the presenter right here. Hi guys. So I kind of have my schedule breakdown here. I took five weeks for Dedicated. Um, I think five weeks is a good amount of time in the sense that um, I feel like after week four, I was burnt out and I was tired. I like could not study any longer. I feel like my productivity was a lot lower in my fifth week um, as well. So for me, I thought I thought five weeks was a good amount of time. Our school gave us, I think, eight weeks total. Um, but I just took the last two weeks as like a vacation kind of. Um, but I think that I know some schools give like three months of dedicated time. If you get three whole months, I don't recommend taking three whole months. Um, you just get really burnt out. And I've noticed that people with a really long dedicated like that, they spend the first month going like, oh, I have so much time. I have so much time. Um, and then at the end, they're really, really stressed out. So I don't think anyone should take a three month dedicated. But if you really, really think you need one, then take one. But coming from someone that was literally like failing practice exams before like my initial like baseline practice exam I did awful on it failed it um I basically went from like zero to 100 so like don't not that it's graded zero to passing <laughs> um so I highly highly recommend not taking too long for your dedicated but also don't make it super short because you're trying to rush through it because you want to just be one and done you really don't want to study for this test twice because this was the hardest thing I ever did in my life was taking this step one <laughs> so um this kind of my schedule um we can it's five weeks long um each day I kind of had like a different subject that I focused on um you guys can take a look at it but I kind of wanted to go over my daily schedule more um so if you go to the next slide after this I have kind of my daily schedule what I did each day so in the mornings I would do um I would listen to the goalie gen podcast on Spotify um, then I would do some U world questions about the topic of the day, which you can see on my schedule. Um, I would read some first aid, do more questions on the topic of the day. Um, I also did sketchy farm each day and sketchy micro each day. Um, then I did some U world that was kind of mixed, which means it covered all the topics. And then I would, at the end of my day, I would just watch two osmosis immunology videos and two biochem dirty medicine videos. So the way I picked all these resources is because sketchy has always been something that worked for me. I've always been someone that sketchy makes things stick. I've never been someone that Anki works for. So if it wasn't working for you in pre-clerkship, pre don't think that you're going to come to dedicated and suddenly I'm going to be an Anki person and Anki is going to work for me. Um, stick to what you know. Um, UWorld, I think you get out of it what you put into it. Some people like hammer through your world and try and do it kind of as fast as they can. But I don't think, sorry guys. <laughs> but I don't think that that's the best way to kind of go about it. I think that if you do you world, the best way to go about it is to do, go through all the correct answer choices and all the incorrect answer choices. Um, you could hammer through it as fast as you can, but if you go through each and every answer choice, you'll learn four topics in one question as opposed to just learning one topic in one question. So that's something I highly, highly recommend. Like really, really go through your UWorld solely. And because of that, I only got through like 60% of UWorld by the end of my dedicated. And I think that ended up being fine for me. And a lot of my friends also did that just because we were very, very thorough when we were reviewing our UWorld questions. So it took us a lot of time to go through each and every one. Um, oh yeah, Golijin is like a, you can look it up on Spotify. It's like a podcast with a whole bunch of review topics. He has like step one review. Um, so it's just a good thing to listen to if you're just like eating or driving. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the schedule that I followed, if anyone wants to follow a similar one. But again, I want to reiterate, like, do whatever works for you. Also, I didn't pay for all these resources. I paid for UWorld and I paid for first aid. Um, the rest of them, you know, I'm not going to tell you to, like, do anything wrong because doing bad things is bad. But if you look up things on Reddit, sometimes you can find you can find little PDFs of some resources. So I recommend doing that. <laughs> Thank you.
don't be afraid to change your plan something that we talked about earlier at the end of the day like like we said this is your career and do what makes you feel comfortable don't let yourself get pigeonholed into someone else's schedule someone else's expectation and then now what is a good way to review you kind of already heard from each of us about how we like to review like i said like i'm more of a hands-on learner one thing that i will say is that uh now that i've been in a uh, clerkship for six months is like you are studying for this exam and what will help you even more like with being able to master the exam, which is a, you know, it's not like just a, a blunt recall exam. It's second, third, and sometimes fourth order questions. So being able to understand what you're learning, I highly recommend teaching what you've learned. So using the teach back method is probably the best way I've ever learned. And even like if you don't have someone to teach it to, just, you know, imaginary audience at a whiteboard, walking yourself through uh all like i remember whenever i was trying to make sure that i understood all the different diuretics i was i would just i just drew out the nephron labeled it and then i walked myself through how each of them work you know like so like with those kinds of topics like where it's very much so like you need to understand what you're learning so that you can then use that information in like a, a case i'd highly suggest teaching someone or teaching the wall exactly what you're learning that's probably my favorite method. And then also, I will say this, I used to not be a Anki person at all, and I didn't use it during uh, dedicated. However, I've started to use it during clerkships, and I know someone that only started during dedicated, and they did start to kind of pick it up more. So like, for sure, for sure, don't make it your only resource if that's not what you're used to. It's like, use the tried and true methods. But if it helps to just have like something at the end of the day, like for me, it's literally like at the end of the day, going through cards when I don't have any energy to do anything else and it's on my phone, it does help. So yeah, different things. So recall, understanding, make sure you're covering all your bases. Hi, so kind of reviewing practice exams, I would say each day, whenever you do your practice exam, make sure that you're only doing your practice exam that day. Don't try and start studying that day. Because for me, I failed a good amount of practice exams before I started passing them. Um, if And after each practice exam, I would first have a mental breakdown and be like, great, it's over for me. Um, and then if I decided that I was going to sit there and start studying an exorbitant amount of material, I would not have absorbed it at all. My recommendation to you is whenever you're taking a practice exam, just take the practice exam. Um, and then after that, just I would review them on the same day just because I found it to be faster in the sense that I would still remember the questions. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but if you want to do them on separate days, then that's also OK. Whatever works for you. I only did NBME practice tests. I personally didn't do the UWorld ones. One, because I didn't have time. Two, because I heard that the UWorld practice tests were a lot harder and my crippling low self-esteem couldn't take taking an uh, incredibly hard practice test and then feeling like I was going to fail. So I did not do that. Um, I will say I didn't start pa passing practice exams until about a week and a half before my exam. So at least that was the case for me. That was the case for a lot of my friends. Um, I still don't recommend, like, don't take it before you've passed a couple of your practice exams, at least. But um, it's okay if, you know, I feel like studying for step one, alhamdulillah, is kind of a slope. So it's like, um, for me, it was kind of, this was kind of my learning. And then my scores kind of went up like this towards the end. Um, and I find that that's kind of what happened with most people. Um, again, if you notice on practice exams, I'm consistently missing questions about enzymes because the lysosomal storage diseases are a pain to learn. Um, then go through lysosomal storage diseases. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of how you should really like focus in on your studying, kind of figuring out what you always struggle with, what you always get wrong and how to kind of go about doing like content review that way especially towards the end once you've already gone through like most of your topics each day at the end it's mostly just going to be review and fine tuning so that's kind of when you just want to keep track of hey I'm always missing cardio questions I'm always missing these questions that's what I need to go over um yeah
This is a fun one. So for those of you that are in Fort Worth area or Arlington area, there's a lot of really great coffee shops. Uh, one that I go to quite a bit, maybe because I tend to be in Arlington a lot, is called Camarilla. It's a Yemeni coffee shop. They have a Batlawa cheesecake that is to die for. So whenever you feel like the world is ending, it will give you new life. So I highly recommend. Uh, also, I think I'm kind of a homebody. I like to be comfortable when I study. But I will say when you get closer and closer to the date, kind of push yourself to, okay, I want to arrive at the library at 7 a.m., review a little bit, and then take three blocks back, back to back, you know? Like, try to build up that endurance. Because I will say, like, one thing that I had to kind of rush at the end, like in my last two weeks of uh, study before my exam, was building up uh, stamina to take that long day of questions. So I did, like, whole days where... I was like, okay, I'm going to work my way up to seven blocks. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to try to do 10 blocks in a day. And then I almost died, which is not recommended. But uh, put yourself in an unfamiliar environment around the time that you would expect to be testing so that whenever test day does come and you're in that unfamiliar environment, your brain can still function at full capacity. Any other locations that you guys recommend? I don't know a lot of Dallas coffee shops, so I'm going to let someone else take the wheel on that one. I am going to plug SMU Libraries at this point. I love that place. And I don't think I could go back because it's triggering for me. But anyhow, it's amazing because they have like a prayer room, like right across from the library and like the student center. And they have like a Wadu center there too. So it's just like everything is super well set up. Like I could get there at nine or eight or whatever and just be there the whole day because I knew I could pray, I could take my break, et cetera. There's like a park nearby where you could park at. Otherwise, you'd have to pay, I believe. Um, but yeah, SMU was great. I also did a lot of White Rhino um, in Uptown, White Rhino, Toasted Kitchen. But there's a lot of cafes, but SMU was wonderful. Hi, I studied mostly at my apartment. I knew that I couldn't study at home because I'm a yapper and I knew I would just yap with my family any chance that I got. Um, so I knew that I needed to get away. <laughs> um, so I studied at my apartment. Um, and I liked it just because I knew that I always had access to like my janamas, my bathroom, my my fridge, you know what I mean? So in that sense, I mostly studied at my apartment. I didn't really go anywhere else. Um, but I kind of wanted to hit on what um, Stephanie said a little bit earlier. She was talking about how um, uh, you don't want to put yourself in like a completely new environment and then freak out. I want to say that um, your testing center will give you the option to go like take like a mini practice test there as like practice. Um, so if you wanna do that, just to familiarize yourself with the testing center, like you can go ahead and do it. I plan to do it. I'm gonna be so for real. I didn't have time to do it, so I didn't. But I know a lot of people do do that because they have a lot of anxiety and it helps them kind of with their testing anxiety to go somewhere um, familiar. So check it out. Yeah. And then I we kind of wanted to go ahead and include a slide about, you know, keeping up with your duas, keeping up with your namaz, because honestly, like during this time, it's the most like mentally exhausting time of your life. Um, I, I will say that I probably was the holiest I've ever been during my step era because I was so stressed. Um, and I thought my career would be like over because I was so sure that I was going to fail. Um, but you know, like praying just really helps, like making a lot of dua and like taking care of yourself. Don't be a hermit. Like I took break days. Um, they're on my study schedule as well. I took a break day once a week. Um, and those helped as well. Like go do something fun, take care of yourself. Okay, and then this is uh, kind of what we touched on earlier. And we're just going to go into some more. What will the PowerPoint be? We'll talk more about, uh, we'll answer all the questions in just a few minutes because uh, PowerPoint's almost over. And then also all of this will be available to you guys. We're going to post it in the group. And also we're going to send it out to all the chapters so that they can share it with everybody, both the recording and the PowerPoint with all of the amazing, amazing links. Okay, so exam day. So what... Uh, Anusha just touched on like that you can actually come in and like have like a simulated exam experience 
extremely important. I didn't do it and I wish I had, so highly recommend. I can say that if you're testing in Dallas for step one, which I think most of us, all of our, all of us DFW people tend to test in Dallas, the one off of Coit Road is that testing center. It's pretty popular. I would say practice driving to it, pack, like basically like simulate the entire thing, like going in, check in, like you can tell them like, oh, I'm testing in two days. I'm just here because I freak out and they'll be like, haha, you're not the only one. <laughs> so don't feel afraid. Lots of people do it. I did it. I get, you know, I was anxious about where am I going to park? And it's like a big parking garage. Like you go up a giant hill and you have to like press a button. These all seem silly, but whenever you're in, you know, in the most stressful moment of your life, it can seem pretty scary. So don't feel alone in that regard. And then I think also that for Comlex, a lot of us test in Hearst. So that testing center is also in kind of an office building. So yes, go in, uh, I would say like go in, I'm not gonna say the day before, I would suggest to do it two days before, this way the day before you can just rest. Or if you wanna go a week before, that's fine. But I would say just go in ahead of time, have your game plan so that that's the easiest part of the day. Another thing about uh, for the exam, this is one thing that I actually didn't know of, but, uh, and some people will say not to do it. Some people do it. Like for step in between blocks, you can actually like kind of look at notes in between. And the thing is, there are questions that are repeated or topics that are repeated from block to block. I know someone that said that they got seven questions right that they would not have otherwise gotten right if they hadn't been studying between the blocks. So if you have the mental stamina to do that, all you know, all power to you. I just could not do it. <laughs> so I did not do that. I just took my exam and went home and rested. But if you feel like you can whip out first aid between blocks, you know, more power to you. If you make a quick note sheet, that's great too. Okay, and see anything else that we make? Oh, and then go through the full walkthrough. They'll send you an email with all this stuff about like jewelry. Like I saw someone like they had like a chunky hair tie. They were forced to take that out. So just make sure you are comfortable with all of the exam day provisions before you go to your tests. I actually had like a low key, not a nightmare, but like a very scary situation at the testing center in Hearst because uh, um, my full name is pretty long but I only put my first and my last name for testing. And then the lady, whenever I went to give her my ID, she's like, what are these other names? And I was like, those are my middle names. She's like, they're not here, like on this. And I was like, it only said first and last name. And so she made me bring up another form of ID. My cousin had to drive 35 minutes. She's like, if he's not here in 45 minutes, you can't test today. And I was like, okay. And so I just went and prayed in the car. <laughs> and then my little cousin showed up and it was fine. So yeah, I would say just to be 110%, check all your boxes, have your exam day like already outlined a week before the exam. And then you can just focus on resting and reviewing high yield topics in that last week. And please don't over caffeinate yourself. You'll just have to go to the bathroom and freak out and you'll be jittery. Do your normal amount of caffeine. And then these are some resources that I included. These are kind of like my high yield resources that I used. So the first one, he has playlists, like basically it's like an hour and a half long Zoom that he recorded, but it has like high yield topics per system, like for pulmonology, immunology, which is really nice. And I liked it because it kind of felt like a classroom, like during dedicated at one point, you're going to miss being in like an actual classroom where like you feel like you have support. And so having this fake classroom gave me a sense of confidence. <laughs> and also he walks through like cases and imaging. Basically, like, and I definitely saw some stuff from this playlist on my exam, on exam day. So that's why I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to tell everyone about him. Dirty medicine, everyone knows, tried and true, especially for biochem. And then this here, this is the UWorld True Learn journal. So it's just someone created, like, basically a journal outline. And I went ahead and made a copy of it. So where this link will be provided to you guys in the PowerPoint. So what you can do is just click on the link and then put make a copy and make your own UWorld journal. It helps a lot for reviewing topics and like going back and seeing what you've seen. And then the Onking deck, if you don't already have it, it is easy to find online. However, I have heard that with the new update and stuff like that, sometimes it's a little bit difficult. So just find a buddy or just ask Dammer to download it for you because he's the Onki plug. So he's your guy. And so we'll include, we'll just sell you guys all of his information. You can stalk him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but if you need Onki help, there are resources, there are, are on kings around that can help you guys with anything you need. Because the on king deck, 
I didn't realize its power until much later, but it is very powerful. It is amazing. It has ready question ID and then like the sketchy first it, everything, all your resources right there pertaining to that one topic. It's amazing. Yeah, uh, about Anki, I didn't realize it until I got into dedicated. I mean, I never use Anki, but my friends who did, um, if you just search on Reddit for the UWorld questions, it has all the UWorld questions made into Anki cards, and you can go ahead and suspend all of them. And then as you take your test, as you do your questions, you can unsuspend those tags specifically. So if you miss those questions, those can be your flashcards. So you don't have to make your own. You can just use those. So that'll be, if you're an Anki person and you use your world, that's a great thing that you can do. Yep, for step one and step two. I'm only in the step two crowd now, but I wish I had used it for step one. So yeah, most definitely. Okay, now if you guys want to type out your questions, I'm just gonna pull up our chat. Let's see. I don't see any questions really pop up. Um, but if anyone wants to mute themselves, feel free to chat. Um, Wait, I'm getting a lot from you. Sorry, I just want to say I'm getting a lot of DMs about um, how I studied with STEP. Um, with the child and whatever I want to reiterate this is not my child this is my <laughs> niece and I I'm not sure does anyone here know anyone or have any experience you know studying while having a baby or like kids to take care of I'm sorry I, but I can't well not regard there's, um, I know there's someone, someone, there's someone in, too, in our class that she studied for boards and she actually only took Comlex so she has, I mean, it is difficult and there definitely are not as many resources for our parents in our classes, especially if you're a single parent. But I know there's a few people in our class that have kids. And I asked one of them who is also an on King himself. I keep finding more of you guys. But, uh, and he just said that he would, uh, like he would multitask. So they become like proficient at, you know, watching their kids and then going through cards. And then also the, everything that we have, like UWorld, TrueLearn, there are apps. So if you want the mobile version, like right now, because I'm in surgery and I'm like standing shivering for 11 hours a day, I try to do like 20 questions a day while I'm shivering in the corner. So just, I would say if you have a situation that demands your time or if you work, a lot of people actually, I found out have like part-time jobs or family work or other responsibilities, find your resources to try to make it more manageable and then also reach out for help. Like if you need childcare, like I know that like, uh, my friend with two kids, there's a second year now that watches her kids while we're at surgery. So like reach out to your community. That's why we're here. That's why the mentorship group is here. If you ever have a question and maybe like you feel like it's more personal or something like that, feel free. It's a safe space or message one of us panelists because we do not judge and uh, we'll be happy to figure out your situation whatever it may be. I was going to add, there's someone in our WhatsApp group. I just put the link into um, the chat, but she is at UT Southwest and she's currently doing her clerkships and she had a one-year-old at the time. So her name's Abir, she's wonderful. And she can tell you about how she navigated that. And what Stephanie was mentioning, of just making sure you have community and people to reach out to for childcare is super important. Um, but yeah, reach out to Beer, contact her. You can find her in our WhatsApp group. She's amazing. Any other questions over anything? Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. Uh, I am Abdullah Faridi from Khyber Medical College, Peshawar, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So um, the session was really amazing. But uh, 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 I want to uh, say that uh, we sh you should also arrange some uh, uh, workshops about research, how to publish articles, and how to uh, get residency in uh, competent specialties, uh, like what uh, we should do for uh, what, what we should do uh, for, to match in competent specialties. Thank you. Most definitely. Actually, we have a lot of workshops coming up. Uh, we have our annual meeting for the mentorship group to talk about all the programs that are coming up. But I think as of right now, we have seven workshops that are scheduled for this year. And one of them is related to research. 
So whatever suggestions you guys have, also feel free. If any of you ever want to in the mentorship group ask, like, are you guys going to be doing a project over this topic? If you guys have something that you want done and we haven't done it yet, we will make it happen. That's what we're here for. We're here to provide you all with resources and connect people to each other. So we thank you so much for your input and please feel free to speak up if you guys need anything else. That's what the mentorship group is for. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's see. Oh, any advice on how to start studying for USMLE after a long gap? So I think uh, for those of us that have taken gap years, I have not, but I'm just speaking from uh, a friend of mine who's now in medical school that took four gap years. And so she kind of had to start, this was for the MCAT, and so it's a little bit different, but I would say to start a broad content review just to identify what your strengths and weaknesses are or to start by taking, I know it sucks, like the diagnostic test that humbles you and makes you feel like you know nothing, but just to see which areas are weakest and kind of evaluate what you know. So the biggest thing I would say after a long gap is figure out where you need to start and then build a plan from that. And if anyone else has taken gap years and can speak better to that, go ahead. So I didn't take any gap years, but I will say when I started studying for step one, it felt like I was studying from scratch because <laughs> I felt like I didn't remember anything at all from classes. And I feel like that rings true for a lot of people because uh, I guess every school has kind of a different curriculum, but at A&M, our curriculum is very clinical based. They don't really go, it's, we don't really study based on the boards. So studying for boards is very different for us than studying for class. So I will say like following like a topic based schedule where each day I kind of studied a different topic really helped and did content review for it. I know some people said they didn't read first aid, but for me, since I felt like I was starting from scratch, like I, I needed a foundation from somewhere. So I did, I did read like first aid each day. Um, and, you know, supplemented that with whichever like videos I needed to watch. But um, I think that you should be okay, even if, even if you took a gap year. Okay, um, and then I had a question. Sorry, I, was just, I was just gonna say for content review, I feel like Boards and Beyond <clears throat> is really thorough and really useful. Um, I use their videos alongside second year. Um, they have videos on every topic and that was a very thorough. So I feel like if you are, um, you feel like you're missing some concepts that you're consistently getting wrong on your UWorld questions, I would suggest going through Boards and Beyond or any other resource that goes into things deeply. We also have a first year pre-med in our group right now uh, in the chat. And so I know that this is all about USMLE, but the same kind of principles apply for the MCAT. So I know that you're a first year right now, so you're getting a lot of foundational knowledge that probably feels overwhelming and like it doesn't really tie into anything. But I will say like the, the basic core principles that you learn in your first and second year of undergrad will come back again. And a lot of people just kind of memorize it. But if you understand it, like if you like those, like, uh, like Poisson equation for fluid dynamics, like that's how we understand blood pressure and like the change in rate, like why the change in radius has such uh, like a magnified effect is because it's it's uh, raised to the fourth power. Like like just understanding that you don't need to memorize the equation, but understand why the variables relate to each other in that way and how much impact each carries. So I would say like even if like you don't memorize everything from first and second year because you're not going to, I would say to keep that in the back of your mind that these will become important later. Now, valence electrons, it still hasn't become important. I'll keep you posted if it does, but so far, no. <laughs> but I'm sure that there are some people that on the on that molecular level, they're like, you know, they're, they're working. But uh, for sure, uh, I would say, I wouldn't say to look at the MCAT stuff just yet. I mean, you can just to get an idea, but it will be overwhelming when you first look at it. One thing I will say, though, is that for cars, I think that that's the one section that a lot of people are either really good at or really bad at. And those who 
struggle with it, they find it very hard to make a lot of ground in like a few months of study. So if you're not a very strong reader, start to build your reading skills early. So fall in love with reading. If you can't do a book or a short story, then start with poems or little clips or something, but just something to build your reading strength, like, like a muscle. Otherwise, cars will become a problem later down the line. So yeah, Jack Weston's very good. I think, yeah, so Manal already posted the awesome YouTube channel about uh, with all of the videos, which includes the MCAT workshop. So definitely, definitely check that out. All right, are there any more questions? One piece. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if there are no other questions. That's not like Stephanie, I had a question. Yeah. I think I missed the part where the TCOM students went, but so how did you guys kind of divide, like, did you guys feel that UWorld was just sufficient to study for both step one and Comlex? So for me personally, I actually like, so TCOM will open up these like little like mini exams uh, for like different topics. Like there was like a biochem one, a cardio one, a heme one, uh, a farm one, like in their MBOME style exams. I actually used those and I found those to be extremely helpful. So I only used UWorld and then I used some of the school resources. I didn't really use a lot of TrueLearn. I will say like the one thing, like the big difference, it's not, for me, it wasn't OMM. For OMM, the school will give you a big PowerPoint. That's sufficient. That and then dirty medicine, if you need to like kind of watch things. I like to watch, like I like video over just PowerPoint. So dirty medicine in that PowerPoint is enough for the OMM on the exam. But the one thing about Comlex is that it is a larger volume of questions in a shorter amount of time. So UWorld will not prepare you as well for that. So I would say towards the end to use uh, the ComBank, I wish I had done this and like practice with those time constraints for Comlex because it, the time does run a lot faster for Comlex. If anyone else wants to talk about that. Yeah, um, I spoke about this a little bit, but I felt like your questions were a little bit harder. So they definitely prepared me for Comlex as well. Um, some people who just did TrueLearn, I felt like, uh, maybe they were not as prepared for the step questions. You um, Comlex focuses a lot on buzzwords. Um, <clears throat> so if you do UWorld, it prepares you for Comlex, but not the other way. Also, when I was taking my Comlex exam, like the actual test, um, there was a lag on my screen. Um, so that ate up my time too. So definitely, like Stephanie said, um, you have more questions to do, you get less breaks, I think you have 80 questions, and then you get a break, and then you do 80 questions, and then a break on the actual test. So Comlex will definitely test your stamina. Um, but content wise, you will will prepare you. Um, but I would also use TrueLearn just to get used to the um, DO specific OMM questions. So I agree with Kulsum. Uh I did UWorld for everything. And then after I took my step, I started studying for Comlex, which was mostly just continuing my reviews with Anki. And then I would do some true learning questions. I wouldn't do as much as I did for UWorld. Like I would maybe do 40 in a day for true learn because I was already feeling the, the burnout. And I want to give my time more rest because I kind of knew like step is going to be harder than Comlex, but Comlex is just more stamina based. So I was just, and, uh, you know, relax, trying to give myself a break. So that way, whenever I do take Comlex, I actually have the energy to take the whole entire exam. Um, children was a lot easier than Comlex. I'd be scoring 90s, 100s easily on my question banks <laughs> compared to UWorld, which UWorld was devastating at times. And other times it was like, it would go okay. Um, but yeah, UWorld is more than sufficient. And then same thing with Stephanie, just I watched Dirty Medicine for OMM took notes on it, made cards for it, and then I just went from there. And know your Chapman points in Visceral Somatics. That will Good. get you so many points yep. on the test. Can't even say it. And there's one video that exists that I'll, I'll find and I'll add it to this PowerPoint where it shows you like how to make like a little thing for, and I forgot how to do it, but I'm gonna watch it again before level two. I added yeah. to the comments on one of the slides. I can't remember which one, but it's labeled. So definitely watch it before your test. If you're yep. taking comics, easy points. Oh, thank you so much. That was helpful. 
All right, any other questions? Let's see. Okay, I guess that's all of the questions. If you guys think of anything, feel free to message in the group. Please click the link that's in the chat right now to join the group if you haven't already. We're gonna be posting these resources to the group. And then if you haven't already joined your local AMWPA chapter, whether that be at your alma mater, or if you didn't go to school in the US and so you're not at a US-based school, but you have a friend that goes to UTD or knows their son went to UTD or something, you know, like just, Find it through the grapevine and join your local chapters because there's all these great events. We're doing more and more workshops like uh, like us uh, I'm in the medical school chapter, but I'm going to be going out to UT Arlington in about three weeks and doing like a triage workshop. So we all intermingle. So feel free to find a local chapter and jump on in. Happy to have you and thank you to everyone that came today. All right, I guess that's it. Well, thank you everybody. Have a great rest of your Saturday. And yes, please everyone join the group before you leave this, the link is in the chat and uh, we'll be seeing you guys at the next one. Bye guys. Salam, take care.